What I want to do in this video is explore what the actual basket of goods looks like for the consumer price index. We had a ridiculously simple example in the last video. And right over here, this is a table I got. This is from a press release issued by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So if you do a search for a CPI or CPI-U and Bureau of Labor Statistics, you should find the press release where they issue the CPI. And this is the first table in that press release. And they say the consumer price index for all urban consumers, and just like we talked about in the last video, when people talk about the CPI index, they're really talking about, or they tend to be talking about the CPI-U, the CPI for urban consumers, because most consumers fall into this category, US city average by expenditure category and commodity and service group. And then they define their base year. The base year, actually they have a range, maybe I guess they take an average between 1982 and 1984. They say that is 100 unless otherwise noted. And so what they do in this first column, so these are the different buckets that people spend, that the urban consumer might spend some of their money on. So this is saying the basket of goods we're giving a weighting, so about a little under 15% is spent on food and beverages. And then they break down that 15%. So 13% is on food. And then they even break it out between 7% or a little under 8% is food at home. And then they break it out between cereals, meats, dairy and related products, fruits and vegetables. So the average, uh, based on the way the basket looks, it looks like they're spending about the same amount on fruits and vegetables as they're spending on alcohol. And they're spending significantly less on, well, that's, I don't know if that's a good trend right over there. But this is an, that's why this is interesting to look at, because this is viewed as a typical basket of goods for your average urban consumer. And you can see they're spending a little bit more on meats, poultry, and fish. You can see the breakdown. And then you can keep breaking it down. They're spending 41% the basket of goods on housing. And they even break that up in terms of some of it is your primary, some of it is your kind of just general shelter. Then there's stuff like food and util fuels and utilities. That is in in encapsulated in your housing. You're going to have to heat your home and whatever else. Then your furniture, 4% or 4.4% is spent on furniture. We could keep going down. This is pretty interesting to look at. The basket of goods, so this is viewed as a typical urban consumer, spending 3.6% on apparel, 17% on transportation, 6.6% on medical care, and almost a similar amount on recreation, a similar amount on education. And they keep breaking it down into all of the different, in the different categories. A little under 1% on tobacco and smoking products. And you might say, wait, most people don't, you know, these days in the U.S. don't smoke. But the ones who do spend way more than this. So this is an average of, of the, the, all of the people who, all of the people in the United States. So for example, if, if one out of 10 people spent 10% of their income on tobacco and the other people don't smoke at all, then you might get, on average, the, the average basket of goods is about 1%. And they keep breaking it down into, into other things. And all of these weightings combined, they will add to, they will add to 100. That is the entire basket of goods. And now what they do, so this is, this is their weighting. This column right over here essentially gives us the weighting as of December 2010. And that's going to change as people's habits change, or as new goods and services emerge on the market, or frankly, even as prices change, that will change. But you have to have some weighting in which to kind of take a weight of the price changes, or a weight to weight the average percent changes. Now, they told us, they told us that un unless otherwise noted, our base year is going to be 100. And then relative to that base year, they then give us the prices, the price indices for each of these buckets in November of 2011 and then December of 2011. And then they're going to actually figure out their unadjusted percent change to December 2011 from. So this is year over year from December the previous year. And this is from the previous month. And you can see the change from the previous year is much larger than the change from the previous month. And one way to look at this, so this is saying in November 2011, in November 2011, food and beverages on average were about 2.3 times more expensive than they were between 1982 and 1984. December 2012, sorry, December 2011, they were about 2.31 times more expensive than they were in 1982 to 1984. And just as an extra kind of data point, they actually give us this one little line here. They said, well, if we set 1967 as the base year, then all items, so here all items, if we, if we use uh, the, the default base year of 1982 to 1984, in November 2011, all items were about 2.26 times as expensive they were in 1982 to 1984. But if we use 1967 as our base year, now it's about six 
it's 6.77 times as expensive. Remember, the base year is equal to 100. So this is 6.77 times as expensive as they were in 1967. And you could go down, you could go down all of the categories to essentially see these are all relative to 1982 to 1984. So you could see how much things have gotten more expensive. So it's interesting. Things like furniture, things like furniture have not gotten that much more expensive relative to the early 80s. In fact, there are some categories that have even gotten cheaper. For example, new and used motor vehicles. It hasn't changed much at all since, based on at least this weighting, and they do all these adjustments based on the quality of the car. So you might say, wait, I'm spending more on my car than I did in 1982, but they're making adjustments based on your car being that much better and all of that. So it's not exactly an apples to apples comparison. But you can see that based on those adjustments, it doesn't look like it's changed much. Things like medical care has gotten a lot more expensive since the early 80s, four times as expensive. You see right over there. Video and audio has gotten cheaper. Recreation in general has not gotten that much more expensive. Information and information processing has gotten cheaper. Telephone service has not gotten that much more expensive. Communication has gotten cheaper. And you, I don't know if you were around in the early 80s, but actually the, the cost to call someone long distance has gone down dramatically. You even see personal computers. They have gotten cheaper. And once again, like the auto, like the cars, there's an adjustment for, for essentially they don't do it directly because obviously computers have gotten orders of magnitude more powerful, but kind of the you, you, they have gotten on cheaper average and they have gotten much much more much more powerful. But this is fun to look at. I mean, you could see look at right over here, tobacco and smoking products have become dramatically more expensive. You have more and more jurisdictions that are for the most part taxing it or, or whatever to making it harder and harder to buy. You see things like I mean, it's just fun to look at. Dig around here, medical, oh, we already looked at this. This is the overview services, durables. You know, a lot of these things are in kind of this one to two to three price range. But the stuff like medicine, tobacco, much more expensive. Things like computers, communications, much cheaper. And then as we mentioned before, this measures the percent change to December 2011 from the previous year. So that's why it gives you a year over year number. And this is from this is from the previous month. And these are seasonally adjusted changes. And if we have time in another video, I'll talk about how you can calculate or I'll do a simple example of seasonally adjusting things.